dear students myself sonal lad assistant professor at kits college of engineering kolhapur welcome to the course linear integrated circuits we have started with the unit 1 which is differential amplifiers and today we will discuss about the third lesson which will include the ac analysis of dual input balanced output differential amplifier so let us start so in ac analysis we have to study and analysis of the circuit's behavior under the influence of small signal alternating current inputs. It tells us the response of the transistor to small changes in the input signal. That is how the transistor responds to the smallest change in the input signal. The key aspects of the AC analysis are the small signal model. It includes the small signal model. Then we have to analyze its voltage gain, input impedance and output impedance. The voltage gain is nothing but the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage. Input impedance is the equivalent resistance measured at the input terminal when other, another input terminal has been connected to the ground and output impedance is nothing but the impedance measured at the output terminal with respect to ground. Here I would like to ask you a question. You can pause this video for few minutes and try to recall which model is used for the small signal analysis of BJT. Welcome back. So, I had asked you a question that which model is used for the small signal analysis of BJT? The answer is we use H model that is hybrid model for the small signal analysis of BJT. Why hybrid? Because it, it includes voltage current into the analysis and that is why it is called as a hybrid model. Now here instead of hybrid model we are going to make use of R model. Here we are going to the H model is a little bit complex to understand therefore instead of using H model we will use the R model which is a reversed H model. So let us draw the R model for the dual input balanced output differential amplifier. While doing so, we have to reduce the source voltages to 0 that is plus VCC and minus VE should be reduced to 0 that is they have to be connected to the ground okay? and we have to include the small signal T equivalent model for the transistors. So, let us draw the circuit for the dual input balanced output differential amplifier for the AC analysis. So, this is the collector register of Q1 which is connected to plus VCC. Now, the condition is that we have to reduce the VCC and VE to 0. So, now this RC will be connected to ground. Now, we will come to the base terminal of Q1 where there is A source resistance RE1 along with the source voltage V in 1 then there is an AC emitter resistance at the emitter side defined as small r e Now, RE which was connected to minus VEE, that should also be connected to ground now. So, here there was minus VEE which was there at the emitter side. 
now we have reduced it to 0 volt. So, this is the T model for the Q1. Similarly, we will draw the Q mo uh, T model for the Q2. So, this is the AC meter resistance for Q2. Then, the source resistance of V into along with the source voltage V into So, let us call the current that is flowing through loop 1 is I E 1 whereas the current that is flowing through loop 2 is I E 2. The current that is flowing through R E 1, R E 1 and R E 2 are I B 1 and I B 2 respectively. Okay, now what we will do, we will apply Kirchhoff voltage equations in the loop 1 and 2. Okay, so applying KVL in one loop 1 and 2. Now, for the loop 1, the equation becomes V in 1 minus IB1 into R in 1 minus IE1 into RE minus. Now, the current that is flowing through this RE will be equal to IE1 plus IE2 since they are in the same direction. So, the total current that is flowing through this Re will be equal to Ie1 plus Ie2, okay, which is equal to 0. So, this forms the first equation while we apply KVL to the loop 1. Now, we know that Ib1 is equal to Ie1 upon beta AC. So, we will rewrite this equation. So, this becomes V in 1 minus R in 1 upon beta AC into I E 1 minus I E 1 into R E minus I E 1 plus I E 2 into R E is equal to 0. Now, since, since the value of this R in 1 upon beta A C is very small, we should neglect that term. So, if we do so, we can rewrite the equation as I E 1 into R E plus I E 1 plus I E 2 into R E is equal to V in 1 or we can rewrite it as R E plus R E. So, collecting the terms for I E 1 together and R E into I E 2 which is equal to V in 1. So, this gives us the first equation after applying K V L in the loop 1. Similarly, we will apply K V L in loop 2 and we will rewrite the equation. 
so it will be v into minus i b 2 into r into minus i e 2 into r e minus r e into i e 1 plus i e 2 which is equal to 0. Okay. So, now we have what we have done? We have done we have applied the KVN in loop 2 and we have written the equation. Again, since IB2 is equal to IE2 by beta IC, substituting this value in the above equation, we will rewrite the equation as V into minus IE2 by beta AC into R into minus i e 2 into r e minus r e into i e 1 plus i e 2 is equal to 0. Since now the value of r in 2 by beta e c is very very small we will again neglect it. And then we will rewrite this equation for loop 2 which will be V into minus I e 2 into R e minus I e 1 plus I e 2 into R e is equal to 0. So, this is R e into I e 1 plus R e plus R e into I e 2 is equal to V into. So, this gives us the second equation for loop 2. Okay. Now, the first parameter that we are going to derive is the voltage gain. Now, in order to derive that voltage gain, what we will do? We will solve these two equations, equation 1 and 2 simultaneously using Cramer's rule. Okay? So, what is equation 1? It is R e plus R e into I e 1 plus R e into I e 2 which is equal to V in 1 and the second equation is R e into I e 1 plus R e plus R e into I e 2 which is equal to V into now, these are the two equations. Now, we will solve the equations 1 and 2 using Cramer's rule. So, the value of IE1 is given as V in 1, V in 2. And the variables of I e 2 are R e and R e plus R e divided by determinant of variables of I e 1 and I e 2 that is R e plus R e R e R e R e plus R e. So, solving this, this will give you R e plus R e into 
V in 1 minus R E into V into divided by R E plus R E square minus R E square. So, this is the equation that we have got for I E 1. Let us call this as equation 3. Similarly, for I E 2, So, now for I E 2, first of all we will take in the first column the variables of I E 1 that is R E plus R E R E. In the second column V in 1 V in 2 divided by So, the denominator for both of the equations will remain the same. So, let us call this as equation 4. So, now we have got the two values for I e 1 and I e 2 rather two equations we have got for I e 1 and I e 2. Now, since this is the dual input balanced output differential amplifier the output will be measured across the two collector terminals right. So, now the output voltage will be equal to the difference between the voltages available at the collector terminals of transistor 1 and 2. Now, let us assume that Collector terminal 1 is at a higher potential with respect to 2. The equation can be written as Vc2 minus Vc1. That is the output voltage. It is the difference between the voltages available at the collector terminals. Now, this is minus of Ic2 into Rc minus minus of Ic1 into Rc or we can say that it is RC into IC1 minus IC2. Since IC is nearly equal to IE, this is RC into IE1 minus IE2. Since IE is nearly equal to IC. So, this is the output voltage. Now, what we will do? We will substitute the values of IE1 and IE2 from equations 4 in this equation and we will get the value for the output voltage. Okay, so now what we will do? We will analyze the output voltage V naught, which is equals to R C into I E one minus I E two. So we will put their values into the equations from equation three and four, and we will rewrite the equation. So it is V naught into V naught is equal to R C into bracket. What is the value of I E 1 from equation 3? It is R E plus R E into V in 1 minus R E into V into minus I E 2 is equal to R E plus R E into V into now minus minus plus R E into V in 1 divided by since their denominator is same it is R e plus R e square minus R e square. So, collecting the similar terms together. So, see this we can collect this term and this term together and then remaining terms together. So, this will give us R e plus R e into bracket V in 1 minus V into 
plus R e the remaining terms are this one and this one. So, this is R e into bracket V in 1 minus V into divided by now we will simplify the denominator. So, it is R e square plus 2 R e into R e plus R e square minus R e square. Okay. So, this will get cancelled. Again, we can collect from the numerator V in 1 minus V in 2 common. So, this will give us V in 1 minus V in 2 into bracket R e plus R e plus R e that will give us 2 R e divided by now from the denominator we can have this small R e common. So, it will give us R e plus 2 R e into bracket. Okay. So, this will get cancelled again. So, this V in 1 minus V in 2 let us call it as V i d that is the difference input voltage V i d. Therefore, the voltage gain A d which is nothing but the ratio of output voltage to the difference in the input voltage is R c by R e. So, this is the equation for the voltage gain for this dual input balanced output differential amplifier.